And we're back. Guys, as promised, we are going to have a session on how to run downtime in Old School Essentials. And you could apply this to other Old School games. Got our trusty pencil here. All right, so it has been a while since my guys have adventured, some of them up to like two, almost three weeks. And so they have a lot of, of things to cover before we get into like, what is it that everybody's been up to during this time? I would like to talk a little bit about the philosophy of one-to-one -one time and why I believe it's superior to what um, could be considered or what could be called stop time games. Uh, in, in a standard D&D game with stop time, um, the adventurers, you know, it's a bunch of people coming together, eating popcorn, eating pizza, drinking beer, and, you know, they're, they're delving into a dungeon or they're on an epic quest and, you know, 11 o'clock rolls around and it's time to go home. People got to go, you know, go to sleep, got to go to work. And so the dungeon master might say something like, okay, let's stop it here and uh, we'll find out what's behind the door in the next session. Now, this is, it can be really fun and not knocking that kind of game because I, I play those games. I have run games with stop time before and it's worked wonderfully. Um, but what, it, what that does is it freezes the player in the moment and their PC is, is frozen in time and the player can't engage with world of, with the world and with like the the mechanics of the game with strategizing and plot building because essentially they're they're stuck they're in an ice cube right so what I like about one to one time and what you've seen in the previous episodes is at the end of a session, I always say, okay, I'm heading back to town. And I'll make a couple rolls to make sure there's no random monster checks. The time is still ticking. And when they make it back to town, they're safe. What this allows is when the dungeon master or when some of the players are out sick or they've got work and life is just overcoming their game schedule, which happens quite a lot, the people who still want to engage with the game have options and so we're gonna pretend that each of these different characters that we've grown to love and get to know are controlled by a different player and as we go through each of their downtimes you can appreciate what your table would get to experience because you know you're getting text messages in between uh your different work uh, assignments or maybe while you're eating lunch you can play D&D &D because people are like well I have four days where nothing has happened in the game I want to use that time to advance my character's goals and so that that is where I think the philosophy of one-to-one -one time is, is is great because when the game is not being played the world is still ticking every day in the real world is one game one game day as well so let's look at what has happened in the world since we last hopped in. We have taxes and disease checks have to go out. They, this is still going to happen at the first of the month, whether or not I have a session and make a video for it. But we are all the way. Whoa, I think we're, yeah, we're on the 12th. So a lot has happened. Kristoff finished uh, crafting his spell and writing it into his book. He's ready to come out. And so he's going to do downtime. We've got a lot of stuff. Next week, El Elrandon's leg is, is healed up. I mean, since the last session, we've had um, Augustus's arm is fixed. So a lot's going on, but we need to retroactively still pay our taxes and check for disease. And if you remember, if people are paying their taxes, if they pay 10 gold per level, they just, they have no penalty, no bonus, just a flat plus zero to every roll that they make. But if they can pay 100 gold per level at the beginning of each month, every session that they play during that month will have a plus one bonus to any D20 roll. So... We got to do taxes for everybody. We got to do disease checks for everybody. And we're going to do downtime. So we got a big session up ahead. So let's get started <clears throat> now that we've talked to enough philosophy. So there are some people who 
we're just going to zip through really quickly and the others we're going to need to take a little bit of time to get into it really delve in so parman has not played as an adventurer officially he's been a a sidekick this whole time but he is a lawful magic user um, he has magic missile sleep light and hold person he has 160 gold i rolled really really well for his gold um, so what he's going to do he's just going to pay his taxes of 100 gold to have a plus one for december that's it that's all he's going to do other than that he needs to make a disease check he has a two percent chance of Contracting a disease. Ooh, 8%. Not not diseased. Okay. He is officially done. We're going to set him aside. Parman, great color scheme too. I really like this. It doesn't have to be monochromatic, you know. You go multiple colors. Okay. Next up, Elrandon. He's still going to be sitting out. I have the 11th here because this is uh, when he paid his taxes for November. We're going to go ahead and erase that because he's not going to be getting a bonus. He is... Wait, does he have enough money? He's level two. No, I think I'm just going to pay 20 gold. We're going to subtract that away. Oh, yeah, let's make sure we subtract that off of the other character sheet as well. Parman is going to be not broke. He's not broke. He just down to 60 gold. All right. These two guys, they're not going to be engaging any, any, in any activities other than just, you know, paying their dues, checking if they got a disease, and moving on. 2% chance. No. 44, he's good to go. Elrandon is done. We're just going to keep him in the down low for now. He needs to heal up, and having a broken leg is a massive detriment to everybody else in the dungeon. All right. So now we're going to be moving into... You know, it might be faster if I just do everybody's disease check real quick. So let's do that. Let's do a disease check for Chandler. Chandler does not have a disease, but he did roll a four. That's really close. Okay, Ruby May. Let's see if, if Ruby's got any disease. No, that's a 65. Gilius. No, 92. He's clean and ready to go. Fingers. No, that's a 15. We're good. Augustus. Uh, 16. It's fine. And Dirk Coldbreath. 30. No. Godfrey. Two. Oh, you know what's amazing? This is is why Dungeons and Dragons is so awesome. He rolls a two. He confirms to co contract a disease. But guess what? Paladins are immune to disease. I can't believe it, but it actually happened. His immunity to disease pays off. What? Okay, uh, let's go with the wolf. Uh, the wolf of the 12? No. And Kristoff. Who's going to be getting into some maniacal downtime? He is chaotic after all. Uh, 74. No, he's good. I can't believe Godfrey. You can't make that up. See, if you don't record it, no one gets to believe your stories. Okay. Now, we've done we've done the disease check. That part is is finished. So now we just we're gonna go through everybody's uh taxes and then their downtime, respectively. So here, we've got Chandler. He's a level two. So to get the bonus, he'll need uh, to pay 200 gold, which will put him at 1883. Now, he's at 1883. He is going to be doing, uh, I think he's gonna do philanthropy. Yeah, so let's open up our On Downtimes and Domains book. Just past all of the uh, NPCs, there's activities and labor that you can engage with. And philanthropy is here. Philanthropy says a character spends gold on a worthy social group. At the end of the week, they make a save versus wands. Now, we have failed this a lot and had lots of broken bones. Hopefully, with uh, it's a save versus wand. So hopefully with a 12, we can see Chandler succeed here today. And we're going to roll a d8. He spins a d8. Whoa. There. Oh, man. It bounced all the way across the room, and then it bounced back to me. Oh. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> it went all the way across the room and bounced back. That is awesome. Okay. So we're going to roll a d8, and this is how many hundreds of gold he spends and how many hundreds of XP he gets. 
This d20 is to see if he uh, faces negative consequences if he fails in the philanthropy attempt. So he needs to get a 12 or higher. He paid his he paid his taxes, so he is going to get a plus one to this roll. Let's also remember to mark this. Plus one for plus one for December. Okay. He gets a plus one to this roll. He fails the roll, but he gets 400 gold and 400 XP. Let's see what happens when he fails his roll. We're going to open up to philanthropy. We roll a D10. Please, not another broken bone. Oh, my goodness. Don't roll a one on this D10. So many times I've, I've seen broken bones. Um, I want to get a nice, bright D10. I wonder, can you see that? Maybe this green will really pop. Okay, come on. Don't roll a one. Four. The charity attracts the enmity of enmity. I don't know how to say that word. Enmity, the enmity of a non-player character who who hunts them. Interesting. Okay, I'm gonna write that down. That's gonna give me a player hook. That's gonna give me something to hook into the world. He's got somebody's chasing him. Chasing him. Okay, but he spends four hundred gold and gets 400 XP. That's gonna put him at 3,092. 3,092, but he's gonna go down to 1,400 gold. Now, I think that might be level three. If my memory serves me correctly, I think this could be a level up. Let's see, let's open up. If you want to follow along, the cleric is on page 36 of the player's tome. Looking at the level, we can see, yes, he does level up. This is amazing. So he has wisdom of 13, so he does get a 5% bonus. So instead of 3, he gets 150 bonus. Uh, I think that's right, 150. Okay, and he'll roll a d6 and add those for his hit points. Okay, we'll just put 150 here to remember for the level. And then let's go ahead, we'll change this to level three. Okay, now he has nine hit points currently. Let's see what he jumps up to with his D6. Uh, his con is plus zero. Just one more hit point. Well, that's, you know, mm. A little frustrating, but it is what it is. He has 10 hit points officially now. All right, so yeah, that's, that stays at two. That goes to four. So it's three, two, four, two. One, two, four. Wow, look at our friend here. He spends, that's just one week. But if we look down here, we can see that he has, uh, from the 28th of December, is that right? No, November, sorry. The 28th of November uh, is here. Let's see, that's the 30th. Let's go back. Let's, that's the 30th. That's the 29th. And there's the 28th. So he's, he spends this week to December 5th doing that. Then he can go to uh, today's the 12th, so he can do it one more time. So let's go ahead and have him roll one more time. A D8 and a D20. And he gets a, a plus one. Oh, again, another failure. That's too bad. This time he goes 500. So, oh yeah, so now he's at 983. He is spending all of his gold, but he goes up to 37. Now... He's at 37.42 XP. Look at how, if I were Chandler the player, like looking at my character and being like, man, I, we haven't played, I haven't played him since the, uh, November 28th. I'm kind of down about this. I miss my character. I could still get something out of this game. I, I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm messaging my DM and I'm saying, hey, look, I had two weeks of downtime. Today is Tuesday. Let's spin some rolls. Let's do some rolls. I'll send you a video. And, or, you know, like we can meet up at a coffee bar or coffee shop and just roll some dice, you know, hang out with your boys. Okay, so now we're going to change this downtime from November 28th. We're going to say 12, 
13 is when he is available again, which is tomorrow. Um, and, oh, we need to roll a d10 to see what happens, what negative effect. Two. The charity attracts thieves. He loses 1d10 times 100 gold. Oh, no. He gets robbed. Our poor friend here. That's between a 7 and a 1. I'm going to have to roll it again. Three. Okay, so he loses three... Is it 300 or three... Oh, yeah, 300 extra gold. Ouch. You're not broke yet, buddy, but you are really close. He had some rough time with his philanthropy, but he he stayed busy and he jumped up to level three. He's going to have an extra spell now. He'll have up to two spells. He does have somebody chasing him, though. All right, Chandler's done. We'll set him aside. All right, next up. We have Ruby May. Now, I have Ruby. Let's see, what do I want Ruby to be doing? I, I went through it before, and I was like, what would be a good idea for Ruby? Oh, okay, so um, there's the there's the orgies and drinking option. Drinking and orgies. I think Ruby, you know, she's a, uh, she's a wildling, right? She's a, a creature of the wilds. She's going to go ahead and pay... 200 gold, drop down to 22.53 in her gold. But, she, you know, she's a she's a wildling, you know. She's, she's having, like, orgies, free love, you know, uh, wild party time, okay? So she's going to spend a D8 of gold, 100 gold, and roll a D20 to succeed on a... Uh, on an orgy check, you need <laughs> orgy check. Uh, you need to roll versus a uh, save versus poison. So she's going to do quite well with that with an eleven. So let's see how she does. She gets a plus one to this roll. Really bad roll. Oh no. Okay, so this is for also from the twenty eighth. So this will be for the first week. She gets she loses two hundred gold. She spends two hundred gold, going down to two thousand even. Or t sorry, two thousand. 53, and she gains enough to go to 3,100. This might be her level two, her level as well, I mean. Okay, and then we have a negative effect, eight. She has a horrible hangover, starting the next adventure, missing one D4 hit points, minus two to all rolls for 12 turns, and a minus one to all rolls after that. Okay, so this is just for the adventure. We're going to have a plus one, minus one. And for the first 12 turns, a minus two. So we'll even put a minus two. We'll put a minus two for 12 here. And minus one D4 hit points. Let's see how many hit points she's going to start down. Now, the way I'm going to work this is... Uh, the, I guess the way I'm going to work this is... Um, when the adventure starts, she she loses two. So we're going to say minus two here, just at the get-go. But she doesn't lose it right away because she's still going on, like, downtime activities. And so it'll all be cumulative. Whenever the adventure begins, that's when this happens. Because if I do it now, then she just rests the day and then gets her hit points back. And then there's no down there's no downside to that. Okay, so there needs to be a cost. So that was to the fifth, and now we're going to go to the twelfth. December 12th, we're going to do this again. 12, 13 is when Ruby is available again for adventure. Let's roll. Maybe I can roll higher than a four or a five. Come on. Another, you're, you're joking, right? Okay, this one's going to sleep. I failed too many times with it. We're bringing out this dice. 700 and 700. So we go to 38 XP. 3,800. 38. Um, we lose 700, so that's a 13, 1353. I might need to remake this character sheet. I'm starting to, like, erase a hole through the gold. Um, okay, and there's a downside. So what is that downside? It's a six. So this time, gain a good time reputation. Next carousing attempt costs double. Okay, double next carouse. Okay, well, 
Could be worse. All right. So let's see if if 3,800 is enough for a Druid to level up. If you're following along at home, the Druid is on page 40. Oh, we're, we're just a little bit short. That's okay. In the couple weeks it's been since Ruby May has adventured, she has gotten really close to level two. Very close. That's awesome. All right, we're going to set Ruby aside. We'll play with her again very soon. Gilius Thunder Thunderer, the drinking dwarf, only with 964 XP. Sorry. Um, Gilius is going to, he's going to be drinking. He's a dwarf. There's no debate. This man is drinking. Okay, so he's got 700 gold. Um, he has two weeks of downtime, but he might go broke in that first week and um, because he's about to pay his taxes. And so since he's a level one, he's got to pay 100 gold. He's at 600 plus one for December. Now, if he fails to have the a right amount of gold, it says... Uh, Let's see. On a failed say, I think, if, if characters lack the funds, they gain half the experience points indicated by the die roll, and they spend all of the funds. Their save has to be at a penalty of minus four in this case. Oh, man, that's rough. Okay. All right. Let's see what happens here. Gilius Thunder Chunderer. We're going to roll this. We're, we're, yeah, we're going to roll that. Okay, come on. He needs to get an eight but he gets a plus one, so all I need is a seven on the die. You're joking. This is ridiculous. This is just ridiculous. Another fail. Okay, 200 and 200, so he goes to 1164 XP. Goes down to 400 gold. Man. And he's going to roll a d10 here. Five. Trouble with the authorities. Pay 2d6 times 20 gold to get out. Oh, man. Gilius, what did you do? Did you to go? Did you go streaking through the quad to the gymnasium? He's uh, five, and it says five times twenty, right? Let's see, five times twenty. Okay, so another hundred gold, right there. And you know, with that, I think we're gonna have to set Gilius aside. He might need this three hundred gold for his next adventure. So he spends a week drinking and messing about. And, uh, you know, at, at the end of it, he's just like, oh, I, I need to take a break. I can't handle anymore. All right. So our boy here, he is available on December 5th. Oh, December 6th. But he's not going to use that week. It's just going to be a lost week because he's broke as a joke. All right. Now, we've we've made some. We've made some XP gains. Spend some, spend some gold. And there are other options in this book. And so what I want to do now is kind of, uh, is change it up a little bit. And so let's look at, we have a string of characters that are going to do this. Let's see. Um, it is under skills, training a new weapon, learning a talent. I think it's somewhere around here. Raising statistics. This costs 2,000 gold and one month. Each uh, For each additional time, increase the gold by 2,000 to the power of the number of times it's already been increased. The second time characters raise a score, so it's 2,000 to the second power. So it would be 4,000. And then it's 2,000 to the... Oh, then that's... Oh, then I see you do double it to the... 2,000 to the third... That doesn't seem right. Ah, whatever. Um, but yeah, it's got the gold out here. It says it can't be raised past 16, but then down here it gives you an option for it. So I will allow the players, if my characters want to just keep pumping their gold, I will allow them to do that. That's not a big deal. We can go all the way up to 20,000 gold. Uh, but that's not anything we need to worry about today because he's only got 2,000 gold. So Fingers is going to pay his taxes. That's 400. But... He's going to have a plus one on all of his rolls for December. Plus one. 
Now he had he was out until November twenty second. So what that gives him is a total. Oh, what is that? November twenty second. Hmm, I'll have to look at the old the old calendar because I don't have another calendar available. That calendar I have is um, on my phone. Here's November. Okay. Yeah, here's November 22nd. So let, let's take a look. From November 22nd to the 29th is one week. And then two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. So on December 20th, our boy will get out. Fingers will be out. Uh, we'll say, uh, I think he's raising his, which ability does he want to raise? His dex? Yeah, he wants to get a dex of 18, right? It's from 17 to 18, we'll give him a plus three. So dex bonus. So that means not only did all of that time that he wasn't doing anything, like that, that player at home is like, oh man, you know, I can't really get anything done because the holidays are coming up. I have 28 days. DM, I have four weeks. Can I put my character in downtime while I'm off visiting the, the in-laws in Minnesota? And when I come back, my character is ready to rock. Now, obviously, this is right when the holidays begin, but I'm just using that as an example. So to do this, he just spends the gold. It says this costs 2000 and takes one month. Each additional time, it increases by 2000 So right now, our boy is going to spend... 2,000 gold, but he has earned it. He has been a vital component for the adventure. He didn't get any XP. He just spent all of his gold. That's all he did. But when he comes back, it's no longer 17. He's sitting pretty on an 18. The highest stat that you can get in old school essentials. He's got a plus three on his attack roll when using dexterous weapons. He's got another bonus to his AC. He goes to 16. This guy, man, I love me some fingers. Fingers McGonagall, thanks for the name, guys. All right, so I think that's everything for fingers. We're gonna change his downtime. Actually, I'll grab the eraser. We're gonna change his downtime to the 20th, 1220, just before Christmas. All right, oh, man, I know I know we're starting to drag a little bit, so we're going to need to move through this a little bit more quickly. All right. Um, oh, I need to erase this 1600. So here it says 1123 is when Augustus was last, uh, when he's available. 1123 is what's written right here. So let's look at November. We're going to raise Augustus's, what did we decide for Augustus? We do want to raise one of his stats. Oh, yeah, we want to raise his wisdom to a 16 so he can get the 10% XP bonus going forward. Goodness, okay. 10%. It's going to change this. Oh, man, it has not been erased in so long that it's, like, stuck to the paper. It is glued down there. Okay, we've got a plus two now. 16 with a plus two. He's going to spend 2,000 gold and go down to 1,083 gold. And from November 23rd, let's see. That's one, two, three. Four. On the 21st, Augustus comes out. Oh, we could have just looked at, we could have just looked at, uh, yeah, the date and known that. Augustus, wisdom. Very nice. And he now has a plus two to his magic, saves against magic. That's incredible. And then we just changed this date down here, keeping our books up to, up to date so we know exactly what's going on. We don't get no confusion. Zero confusion, boys. All right, so I hope you guys are getting an idea of how we do this. We're going to do the same thing for Dirk. Um, we want to get Dirk's con up to a plus two. So I wrote this in marker. So I'll go through and I'll change this with a whiteout. Let's go ahead and do that right now. Let's go ahead and change that with some whiteout, and I'll just blow dry that. All right. It's not the first time this sheet has been whited out, actually. All right.
it. And as that's drying, we will check the numbers here. So 11.23, he comes out same time as Augustus in December. We're going to say Dirk with a con. Okay. He's going to spend 2,000 gold. He's going to go down to 1,194. 1,494, and his con is going to go to plus two. Now, I was talking to my players at the table, and I was like, what, uh, do we do the retroactive plus one? And they were all unanimous, like, absolutely. If you spent the gold to get the go uh, to get the con up, you need to have an effect outside of a plus one going forward. It needs to be, like, super impactful, um, because leveling up after level three to, like, level four and five, you might only level up one time and is 2000 gold really worth one hp everybody said no so uh what we're gonna do is add a total of three hp to his maximum hit points and when he levels up going forward he's going to continue to get one all right let's see if this is dry okay let me just put that you know what, let's just put the six right there for now while it's drying. Okay, and now he is done. Just to make one quick little note. I know this is kind of a slower part. We're kind of in a little bit of a slog here, guys. Uh, please stick with me as, as we learn how to do downtime in old, old school games. Godfrey, he is also going to be raising a stat. He's going to be raising his constitution. He, it's been at a negative one this entire time. And that's not any good. So, spending 2,000 gold. Oh, sorry. That goes to 1. He's at 1,400. 1,400. He goes to 1,220 on his downtime. Oh, did, did I pay my taxes here? I did not. Did Augustus pay his taxes? He did not. See, this is where you got to be careful. pay these taxes real quick oh and fingers didn't pay his taxes either oh no fingers did yep all right he's level four he's gonna go down to 683 gold but he now has the bonus he is gonna go to 1194 and he's gonna have the plus one for december Godfrey is going to go down by 300, so he's going to go to 1,100 gold. Oh, you know, he can't even afford it. He can't afford it. So he's going to go ahead and do some philanthropy. He's going to save versus wands. Uh, he's got, uh, he went from the, he has a total of, let's see. That was in November 23rd. How many weeks is that until tomorrow? Let's see. The 23rd, so that's one week, two weeks, three weeks. Let's see how much gold he has. He could go up to three weeks. He could go up to the 14th. Let's let's see what happens here. Let's see how much gold he can spend. D20, D100, he gets the bonus of plus one for December. Let's save versus wands. His wand save is 11. Let's do it. He, hey, hey, we finally got a save. No negative roll. We're just going to go 700 XP and lose 700 gold. And that's basically going to break the bank for him. You know, he's at 478. He's going to hang on to that. And then this is going to go to 8,000... 252. 8,252 XP quickly refer to the player's handbook to make sure that he's not level four i don't think he is i i can't remember what the pally gets but i know it starts to really slow down after level three paladin is oh went a little bit too far paladin's on page 68 yeah it, it, he's got until twelve thousand, so he's got a long way to go but uh, some use of his time some use of his time all right, now we're getting into the really, really fun downtime activities. These, oh, uh, he spent one week, so he's on the 30th of November, but again, he's not going to use that. It's just going to be lost time because he's out of gold. All right, now the wolf 
is going to do an assassination. So to do an assassination, let's turn the, a couple of pages over. It says, a thief or an assassin may either play out the assassination or it can be simplified to the following procedure. To assassinate her target, she must succeed on a move silently skill check, modified by the precautions the target is taking. We are going to say that the, uh, this is just a hit job. The person is taking no precautions. They don't know that this uh, the contract is out on their head and the wolf is just going to go snip snip. Um, a completely unaware, unguarded target will grant a bonus. In general, difficulty is increased by 5% for every two hit die of the creature. By 5% for, for guards, no guards. And uh, elite guards, 15, no. No magic protections, no. Uh, not for this assassination. Um, okay, if the check is successful, the target must make a save versus poison with a penalty equal to the thieves' level or die. Okay, on a failed move silently check, the character could get caught and charged with a crime. Now, we are going to take the, the sword and we're going to give it to Augustus during this time. He's, he's going off on like a, a sniper mission. He's going to be using a bow. And so he doesn't want to risk the magic item and neither does my team. So if successful, the thief gains the bounty, which is equal to one to 400 gold pieces per hit die of the target. The thief gains a normal amount of experience for killing the target. Each attempt takes one week of requirement, target planning and execution. Okay, so... This is kind of a complex deal. We need to succeed on a move silently check for our first week. Let's roll a d100 right now to see if we succeed on the move silently check. Now we do get a bonus because the character, the person, the target is completely unaware. So we're going to add another 5% to whatever we roll. 82. We fail miserably. The wolf is going to be probably apprehended. He may be caught and charged with a crime. If successful, yeah. So he, so we don't even need to worry about all this extra stuff because he failed so badly on his check that he might be arrested and just charged right away. So uh, let's see if he can, let's see, hide in shadows successfully to get away. If he cannot, then he is going to be arrested. 84, again, he fails miserably. The wolf is arrested for attempted murder and he is going to be uh, locked up. He's going to be locked up. The wolf is gone. Uh, you don't get out uh, uh, on murder charges, not murder one. So he's going to be locked up. Uh, we can uh, actually refer to this book later and see how many months he gets or maybe even years that he gets locked up. We can look at that, but we're going to assume that he's now, the wolf is officially retired from the campaign. It happens. Downtime can be a problem sometimes. So yeah, our boy, the wolf, Goodbye. Last person, Kristoff. This guy is going to do human sacrifice. He is a chaotic magic user, and he is seeking a powerful reward from a devil or a demon of another of another dimension. Let's take a look at sacrifice. The character can sacrifice gold or creatures to a dark master. The character must have a specific dark god to make a sacrifice in service of. I think we go straight to Asmodeus, the king of all devils. The blood of an animal is 100 gold value. The blood of a sentient counts as 1,000 gold per hit die. Let's roll our hit die. He's going to target someone from the church, a female, a virgin, and an innocent. And you'll see why. But let's see what level it is, because he's going to cast his sleep spell. That is a level one cleric. And uh, we're going to say she's like a 16 or 17 year old cleric. He targets her. He finds her. He, he attends church under false pretenses. And he lures her to the side and he casts sleep on her. He knows she's a virgin. She is chaste for her Lord until her wedding day. He knows that she is under 18 years old. Let's take a look here. It says the 1,000 gold per hit die. So he can get a 1,000 gold reward. It's doubled if it's a child less than 18 years of age or whatever pre-adult is for this creature. She's like 16, 17. So we're going to double it to 2,000. 
female, double it again from 2,000 to 4,000. Doubled if it's willing, she is not willing. We're gonna double it again, doubled if she's a, she's a virgin. Boom, 8,000 gold spell going off right here, right now. On a successful charisma check of nine plus, the Dark Master has accepted the character's sacrifice and rewards the character with the gold value of the sacrifice. The gold can appear directly in front of the character or be given as a windfall. For every 1,000 gold sacrifice value of the sacrifice, the charisma check gains a plus one. We get a plus eight. Are you kidding me? Instead of receiving this gold, it can be exchanged one-to-one -one for experience or one to two for the acquisition of a magic item or the services of a demonic devil undead or dire creature for the length of one year and one day the creature can have one hit die per each 1000 gold spent we, we aren't summoning any devils today how, how long does this take on a failure it's okay all multiplied or cumulative so a willing young virgin human female would grant sixteen thousand. A magic item worth 32000 or the services of... Oh, I see. It's one to two for the magic item. So I can get a huge magic item. I can get, uh, instead of 8,000 mag... I can get a 16,000 gold magic item. Um, this can be attempted only once per month and on the appropriately unholy day, usually the night of a new or full moon. Multiple creatures can be sacrificed. Sacrificing gold or gold equivalent res returns the same benefits. Okay, so... We're going to say this is a month of activity. Well, it says it can only be done once a month. Huh, let's take a look. So Kristoff was busy during the third. So sometime here we could have some kind of unholy day. What would it be? What would that unholy day be? Maybe. Oh, we could say it happens on Christmas Day. And therefore, it is like it's a sacrilege that we're murdering on the, the day of our Lord's birth. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to put him out until that time. Kristoff. Sacrifice. All right. Now, we get a, a plus eight to the roll, so there's really no way we can lose this. Let me make sure I read that right. The gold can appear. Okay, for every 1,000 gold value of the sacrifice, the charisma check gains a plus one bonus. Yeah, so no matter what, I get it because it's a nine. Yeah, so we got seven plus eight. Yeah. Okay, so that is a success. We have uh, we cast sleep on her. We take her back into our secret chambers where our altar is set up to the Dark Lord Asmodeus. We slit her throat. Her pure blood spills across the altar. And we are, we are summoning forth a magic item. Something of great value, great power. If, if he does this too often, he's going to start drawing attention. But for now, one missing cleric, it's just a cost of doing business. Let's pull open... The DM's guide. We're going to find the magic item that we're looking for. And then we're going to call it here, boys. Because it has been a long one, but an interesting one. All right. So we're going to go to the miscellaneous magic item section. Now, you know what? Let's go for a staff of power. What about this? Let's see. An unremarkable book with powerful and holy enchantment. Hmm. What would be a good one? I think maybe a staff, some kind of a caster staff would be good. Yeah, that that's it. Let's go. Ooh. Gems are really powerful. No, let's go for a staff. It'll be so fun if he's got if he's walking around with just like this this beast mode staff. All right. Rods. Rods are okay. Okay. What have we got here? The Staff of Power. An item of great wizardly power. This staff may be used as a weapon in melee. 
and may evoke five different magical effects. Used by arcane spellcasters only. That fits him. Expending one charge inflicts 2d6 damage on a successful hit. Conjures a cone of freezing energy. Ooh. Cast light, fireball, lightning bolt, telekinesis. Hmm, this might be too good, but you know what? It's a game of fun. Staff of Wizardry. This is the supreme wizardly power. This one is just great wizardly power. Let's go with the Staff of Power. He summons forth the Staff of Power, and it even has the head like this. You see Asmodeus' skull resting on top of the, the staff or head. Now he can cast Fireball, Telekinesis, Continual Light. He can cast Cone of Cold. All we need now is to know how many charges this will have. We just got to go back just a little bit to the staff section. Charges, unless noted magic wand. Oh, that's wand staffs. Unless noted, 3d10. Okay, let's roll 3d10, and that's how many charges. One, no. One, no. 10, Ugh, 12 charges. That could have been way better. Oh, man. All right. Staff of power, 12 charges. Let's go. Staff of power, 12 charges. All right. And we have the wand of negation on him. Okay, guys, that's how we do it. That's how we do downtime. You can keep your players engaged even when they can't show up to the gaming table. You can play Dungeons & Dragons anytime you want. This is how we do it here. Scott from Mike. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.